All right, I saw a newly posted video of Dr. Burke on avocados. It popped up in my feed and I watched it. And in that video, he villainizes ethylene, a plant hormone that's commercially used to ripen fruit. So you know, that kind of triggered me a little bit because ethylene is really not dangerous at all for you. <laughs> We are talking ethylene and avocados because that is what I chose to do in my free time. In the world we live in today, we can choose between two things, misinformation and lies on the one hand, or we can choose the facts. And a lot of people unfortunately follow or choose to follow lies, right? Maybe it's convenient for them or it often confirms their biases that they already have and the feelings that they already have about certain things or people. That has been used a lot to purposefully bury facts under a whole bunch of misinformation. Food, where we are working in here on you, our YouTube channel, mostly the food realm is just one of the many realms where this is happening. If you choose to follow that kind of content and thinking, the biases that you already have are being confirmed over and over and over again, then you start believing at some point that those lies are the truth and you start losing sight of what is actual reality. But the issue with is that Dr. Burke is among the many out there that take it, unfortunately, very lightly with the truth. And while he's not wrong about everything he says, he does spread quite some misinformation, especially about food. And that is a massive disservice to everyone who is watching his content. So, before we watch the clip, I want to also say one thing. He later talks in the same video about how commercially available avocado oils also have traces of other oils in it. And that is true. But that has nothing to do how avocados are harvested, transported, and ripened. For the sake of time, we will not talk about that, but we will focus on the other part of the video where he is spreading a lot of misinformation and fear about ethylene treatments and fruit ripening, specifically in avocados. I used to think that avocados were the most amazing superfood that you could possibly eat. I would recommend them, tell my patients to consume these, until I found this. When they arrive at the grocery store, many times they put them to this gas chamber. Then they artificially ripen them with something called ethylene gas. The problem with this is when you do this prematurely, you no longer help develop the natural flavor chemicals because you're creating in this artificial ripening process. You don't develop the phytonutrients. And that's why when you buy it, it looks perfect on the outside, but on the inside, it's terrible. Anytime you force something to ripen, it's very unnatural. All right, wow. So. Um... I watched it once and I feel like I missed part of this, really. Um, that's a lot to unpack, holy sh**. <laughs> Gas chamber, artificial ripening process, inside is terrible and every time you force something to ripen, it's very unnatural. We're gonna fact check him on this and we're gonna start with what is actually ethylene. I wanna give you a little bit of a history lesson here. Chemically, ethylene is a gas, right? It's C2H4, it's a very simple gas. And it is also most Importantly, a plant hormone. Like humans or like other animals, plants have a whole range of hormones. They're different than the ones that we have, but they do the same thing. They promote growth, for example, or development. And ethylene is one of those home hormones, which means all plants produce ethylene on their own. So ethylene is a plant growth and ripening hormone, and it has especially a large impact on things like flower initiation or germination. And in some plants, it also has an impact on fruit ripening. That naturally occurring ethylene that you find in fruits that produce ethylene is used for more than 2,000 years for ripening fruit. It happened in ancient Egypt and in ancient China who used naturally produced ethylene to ripen, for example, figs or other fruit. Today we know that there are two different classes of produce. There's this one class of produce that produces ethylene and then there's one class of produce that produces just a little bit or no ethylene. We call the ones that produce ethylene climacteric and the ones that don't produce ethylene, we call them non-climacteric. So if you look at this table here, for example, you see that apples, avocados, pears, peaches, plums, bananas, tomatoes, and a lot of other produce produce their own ethylene quite in large amounts. While other fruit like strawberries, blackberries, most of the citrus fruit, eggplants, cucumber, and watermelons produce very, very low ethylene, if at all. So those are the two categories of fruit and produce we have. So now, you see that avocado is in this high category. Avocado is a climactic fruit, together with apples, kiwi fruit, peaches, and a lot of others. So now, the fruit that produce more ethylene, they're also more sensitive to it because there's a reason they produce it, right? The natural production of ethylene helps those fruits to ripen. 
So a very good example is, for example, bananas. If you go into the grocery store, you often see bananas hang out on their own. They're kind of separated from most of the other fruit, especially from the apples. The reason is because they're sensitive to ethylene and apples produce a lot of ethylene. If you put bananas and apples together, your bananas get spoiled very fast. You can see the rates that they produce here, right? In this table. So now, the fruits and vegetables that are sensitive to ethylene are often ripened in today's food production systems in so-called ripening facilities. The reason is very simple for that. Because your avocados that you enjoy in winter, or that you enjoy in Alaska, right, or that you enjoy wherever you are, most likely they're not grown where you are because they just don't grow where you are. It's hard to grow, a, you know, a avocado in New York State. So... They're grown where they're grown best, which is in California, which is in Mexico, which is in other regions of the world. So they have to get from where they're grown to where you eat them. So with climatic fruit, that's an issue because climatic fruit producing ethylene on their own, which means they ripen, which means you can't transport them, right? So that is why those fruit are typically put into a non-ripening transportation and then put into a ripening chamber before you eat them in the grocery store. Otherwise, most of that fruit would be spoiled by the time it arrives at your grocery store. Okay, so let's first look at this last step because this is what Dr. Berg is talking about, the ripening facility. It's not a gas chamber, right? We're not in Nazi Germany. This is a ripening facility. So the concentration and exposure time of ethylene differs a lot from like the ripening status of the avocados when they come there, from the variety of avocados. We eat mostly Haas avocados, but there are many other avocados around. And it can be anywhere between 10 and 100 parts per million of ethylene over a very short time. That triggers ripening. And then those avocados that have been triggered with ethylene, they then go into the grocery store, and that's where you can buy them. I want to just show you a little bit how this curve looks like, how the type of ripening curve looks like for avocado. You see here, this is usually what's happening over transport. And then you put it into the ripening facility, and that's where you induce the ripening and then you get it out of the ripening facility and you put it into the grocery store where you all enjoy avocados year round. Imagine that. So that's a lot of work, right? So to understand why avocados are often ripe in the ripening facility, we have to really understand how the supply chain works. You know, and you can see that in the avocado supply chain, the ripening facility is often before the introduction to the supermarket, which makes a lot of sense because you don't want to transport a bunch of ripe avocados across the country or across the world, from California to Virginia, for example. I want to sum this up before we go into the nutrition part. Ethylene is a natural occurring gas, a plant hormone in gaseous form that is produced by all plants. If artificially put on the fruit, which is sensitive to ethylene, then it ripens the fruit. So now, with certain fruits, tomatoes, apples, avocados, bananas, you can harvest fruit at an earlier stage, before they are called ripe, and then they're easier to transport, and then they can be ripe, ripened before they go into the grocery store, artificially in a ripening facility with ethylene. That is what's happening. All right, so now let's talk about ripening and nutrition. And for this, we need to dig a little bit deeper. Because typically, if you store a lot of avocados together, they all emit and are sensitive to ethylene. Which means that in practice, you harvest a bunch of avocados, you like your avocado feels like 100 acres big, and you harvest all the avocados. And then you put them into a transportation container that goes across the country, or that goes on a ship, and then is shipped here. By the time that truck ends up in Virginia or at the port, most of those avocados would be spoiled, because they're producing their own ethylene. They are ripening as we speak. So... They have to be somehow transported from the field and then they have to be shipped to you. During that shipping process, we actually do not want ethylene to be produced because otherwise you would open that truck or the shipping container and half the avocados would be spoiled. Even if you store them at low temperatures, that, that can happen even at 5 degrees Celsius or 4 degrees Celsius. So a lot of avocados in, are stored in a very small space and they all uh, emit a little bit of ethylene and that accumulates to quite a lot of ethylene which will ripen those avocados very fast. Those treatments that remove the ethylene from the storage container can affect the composition of nutrients in subsequent ripening. And there has been a very good study done a couple of years ago and I'm going to cite mostly from that study. So this mainly affects the fatty acids and the sugar content. But as you can see here in this table, differences are slight and, de and they depend a lot on the storage temperature. For example, if we found avocados that were stored at 20 degrees Celsius and then put into 5 degrees, then you can see an impact on sugar contents, depending on what material you use to remove the ethylene. But if you store it at 5 degrees Celsius, nothing, no differences were found in sugar contents. And in another study from the same author, they looked at fatty acids profiles, profile of late season fruits, and they remained mostly unchanged 
in response to the treatments or storage time. With early season fruits, there was a slight difference among fatty acids profile. So what that means is that the treatments before the avocado is actually ripened, the ethylene removal treatments might have a slight impact on nutrition, but it's very minimal. It's almost negligible. And now I want to talk about what's happening in the ethylene ripening facility. So the somewhat newer study looked also at the ethylene treatment for ripening, you know, and see what type of nutrients can be affected by that. And they, don't, they didn't look only on avocados. They looked at all climactic fruits, bananas, tomatoes and other fruits. And what they found is that vitamin B9, folate, vitamin B9 can actually increase during artificial ripening in some of those fruits, especially in bananas and tomatoes. They found a much higher vitamin B9 content. But you know which fruit was not affected by this? Avocados. Avocados folate levels remained the same. So there are two takeaways here. A, avocados are not a scam. They're healthy. They're high caloric, but they have healthy fats, they have a ton of fiber, and you should eat them in moderation if you like them, period. The second point, though, is much bigger. You're constantly being bombarded. Now from social media, politicians, government, you're constantly being bombarded with misinformation. And you are worth a lot more than that. You should stop giving in to those fear-mongering tactics. So if you want to learn more about food misinformation, sign up for my new book it's over here or over here, there. It'll be available as soon as an ebook on Amazon and Kindle, and it has a whole section on food misinformation in it. And as always, please subscribe to my channel. It really goes a long way. And thanks again for everyone who's subscribed. We are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by end of this year. Thanks for watching. I see you next time. I'm out.